Hey guys, Kiwi Sylveon, and welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. We're here in Chapter 6. Varg! I told you I'd come back for you, didn't I? Bark taps his cane on the floor, creating a shockwave of powerful energy that blasts us all across the room. The impact of the magic forces me against the wall. I collapse to my knees, the cane thrumming in my head. The cane collapses somewhere nearby, and I hear the crack of the box as it lands on the ground a few feet away from us. While Toto is sand, I take a knee, helps me back to my feet. Yay! Renelpe, are you alright? Yes. Yeah, so Penelope? The king looks at me quizzically, but his gaze doesn't linger. He looks towards Vargs, his eyes narrowed. Did the king remember who I was? Your Majesty, are you hurt? The king shakes his head and at won't be turning. Before turning his attention to Varg, his eyebrows furrowed. Who is this man? Your Majesty, this person is working for the wicked witches. What? Wait, what happened to Jordan and Garland? They were just outside the door. What did you do to them? Bart cocks his head to the side. Who? The guards outside the door? I'm sure they must have hid themselves when they saw the king coming through this room. But they still should have been able to see Varg coming. Guards? I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about, princess. Bard seems like he's telling the truth, but I can't t trust him. Please, let them be safe. I see Neverland a few feet from us. I can try to grab it, but Varg will probably thwart my attempt with magic. I have to wait for an opening. I'll distract them. Oh, uh, do that. The both of you need to run. What? I eye Varg. He looks at the three of us with his lips slightly quirked, as if he is amused. This isn't the time to argue with me, Penelope. Hmm. No. Penelope. We must prioritize the king's safety. Everything back? Good. I don't know how, but I must do something. But we're in this together, Waltz. I'm not going to run away while you sacrifice yourself for us. Waltz's disapproval is clearly written on his face, but he eventually sighs out, seeming, it, seeming to let it go. You're too stubborn for your own good. So I've been told. I turn to the king and place a hand on his shoulder. Your majesty, leave this to us. You have to escape somewhere safe. This doesn't involve the king. It's me that Varg wants, after all. The king shakes his head as he removes my hand from his shoulder. He stands up and moves in front of us before pulling his sword from his sheath. Um... I think I'm starting to see where the main character gets her stubbornness from. Besides Tildor. Because Tildor's thick. Your Majesty! What kind of king would I be if I stood back and allowed two children to protect me? Yeah. Varg looks amused by our conversation. You know that I'm not letting you get away this time, Princess. It doesn't matter who stands in my way. Father, his cane is enchanted. You can't hold him with just a blade. Father? Hey! I'm at a loss for words. It's been a long time since I called him that. Much to my surprise, the king's lips fall into a soft smile. You said that at the gates that one day, and you were seeking an audience with me. 
I have not been able to forget that day. Before I could say anything in return, a familiar smooth voice breaks the ensuing silence. Oh, I wonder where all these voices are coming from. And here's the snake himself. A familiar man steps into the doorway. He inspects everyone in the room quietly. Mithros! Your Majesty? Quick. We have an intruder in the palace. He gestures at Varg, who looks unperturbed. An intruder, you say? Sir Mithros turns to Varg. At first, his expression is impassive, but slowly, his lips begin to edge into a sly smile. You're such a ruffian, Varg. Look at all the property destruction. I can only gape at Sir Mithros in shock. If he knows Varg, then he's most certainly affiliated with the witches. You know this man? Explain yourself, Mithros. We're all thrown off guard by Sir Mithros laughing. Soon his laugh becomes a mad cackle. There's a strange brightness in his eyes that sends shivers down my spine. <laughs> your, my apologies, your majesty. I'm just amused at my servant's atrocious behavior. At ease, Varg. Sir Mythos gestures at Varg, a silent command to lower his cane. Varg obeys him before moving to a corner of the room and leaning against the wall with disinterest. Don't worry, your majesty. You're not the one we're after. What? Sir Mythos turns his sly smile on me and I instinctively take a step back. The princess is the lady we need to escort. Escort? Princess? This girl's a princess? That is correct. It's a shame you can't remember your own daughter. Even though she stands right in front of you. Enough with your vagueness. Explain yourself. The king's grip on the hilt of the sword tightens. I'm not obliged to explain everything to you. Try thinking on your own for, your ch for a change, your majesty. Mithros! Sir Mithros ignores the king's outburst and turns his attention to Walt. He visibly stiffens and a sly smile contorts into a grimace. And look who we have here. I see that traitor has returned to the palace. Walt stares at him, looking puzzled. Sir Mithros tilts his head to the side and offers Walt a lopsided smile. You still look the same as you did back then. I didn't think it was possible for you to grow any weaker, Walt Cresswell. Cresswell? Hello? Mithros. I see. Walt suddenly looks melancholy as he stares at Sir Mithros. Walt, what's going on? How do you know him and what's going on? I'm so confused. This man's real name is Myth, and he's a witch, same as me. It appears that he's been using a powerful glamour to conceal his real identity. If I hadn't been cursed, I would have been able to tell right away. I would have not given you... I would not give yourself so much credit, Cresswell. Walt narrows his eyes, but says nothing. I glance between the two of them, confused. But how do you know him? And how does he know you and... What's two plus two? Is this no fish? He secretly worked with your mother. Practically worshipped her. I was the only other person who knew of his existence to wish outside of the tent of bomb bear. A witch? I trusted you, Mithros. The king says the words through gritted teeth. His face contorted in anger. Why am 
my toad. Sir Mythos flicks a wrist. It's a dismissive gesture, and he still looks amused. What a hypocrite you are, your majesty. The eyes waltz. You're willing to play nice with some witches, but not others. This bias is what drove us witches to madness in the first place. Sir Mythos faces the kin, kin with a grin? Hello? King with a grin. You're a human. You human hypocrites are so easily easy to ma manipulate. It's pathetic. Mithros! The car king charges towards Sir Mithros with the sword held high. Your Majesty, I don't! Uh, that's not Parfait or Valora, so... Zing! The king's sword never touches Sir Mithros. Sir Mithros only has to be hold out his hand and suddenly an invisible force pushes the king back. He crashes into one of my shells, knocking down my dolls. God damn it, Mithros! Them are my dolls! I mean, is the king alright? Priorities, I have them. I swear. Your Majesty! I quickly run to his side to help him up. Thankful he doesn't seem to have any major wounds. To think there was a witch working in the palace the whole time. I'm not the good kind of witch either. I was too careless. Rejoice, your majesty. I still have more surprises for you. I will never forget this betrayal, Mithros. Betrayal? I'm afraid you've been played for a fool this entire Played for a few, 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 this entire time, your majesty. My loyalty has always been reserved for Lady Hilda and no one else. Myth, I can't imagine what you, you would hope to gain from all this. Hilda's long gone. Mithra's eyes flash as he turns his spear glare on Waltz. His voice is seething with venom when he speaks. Had it not been for you, traitor, she would still be here. The king mentioned Waltz's betrayal. Sir Mythos called him a traitor. What exactly did Waltz do? Sir Mythos beckons me forward with a gesture of his hand. Now, if you please, princess, come with us if you don't want them to get hurt. Waltz immediately stands in front of me. Aww. I won't let you take her. In your current form, you don't stand a chance. I'll make certain that you never break your hurts, Waltz. The whole thing was a setup. A trap. I'm sorry, Waltz. This is my fault. No, it was mine. The reason we came back was to break my curse. Eyes once again flick to the box on the floor. <clears throat> Neverland is just a few steps away from me. Neverland. Waltz's eyes fo follow my. He leans back to whispers to me. You have to get the box and break my curse. I feel for the key inside my pocket. Waltz's true magic is inside, indeed sealed in that box. Then releasing it might give us a chance at victory. And Mythos and Varg don't seem to have caught on to the fact that the object to help break Waltz's curse is right at their feet. Okay. The king moves to stand beside Waltz and draws the sword again. His body is shield. Your Majesty! I will not let you take this girl. You'll have to go through me first. You, you can't do this! Penelope. I've always loved that name. I thought if I had ever had a daughter, I would have given her that name. Magic makes even the impossible possible. 
You must truly be my daughter. Yes? Tears start to blur my vision. Oh, how disgustingly touching. Seems as if I would just have to deal with you first. No! I rushed towards the box at the same moment Mithros cast his spell. Fargo lunges sword in his hand, reaching for me. But he's too late. By the time he grabs me, I already have it inserted the key into Neverland. I give one definite twist and hear the click of the box as it pops open. Light flashes through the room, blinding me. Suddenly I feel a strong arm hold around me, holding me tight tightly, protectively. When I open my eyes, it's Waltz, I see. Even several years older, I still recognize him. Hi. Aw. Waltz? Hi. Hi, big boy. You're a big boy now. You're no longer a kid. I have to go kind of deep. Deep southern? Yeah. Hey there, little star. Seems like my turn. Seems like the tight turn, myth. Waltz grins, and I see a confidence in his expression that I've never seen before. Mithril's frown is only more severe. Fool! I shall sh I will show you that I was the favorite apprentice. Be careful not to hurt the mist, princess, Mithros. Frog's voice is almost teasing. But Mithros doesn't seem to care. I didn't plan on it. Mithros gestures his hand in a sweeping gesture. The beginnings of a spell gathering at its fingertips. Moss looks at me and smiles reassuringly. Now when I say that I can protect you, Penelope, I definitely can. Ooh, pretty! So pretty! Moss out. Holds out his hand just before Mithras' magic reaches us. An invisible barrier suddenly appears in front of us, thwarting Sir Mithras' magic. Why does this keep saying Sir? We know he's evil. <laughs> Seems like I'm not as rusty as I thought I would be. Well, snaps his finger and effortlessly creates a dark wave that pushes both Mithras and Varg to the wall. <laughs> Let's go. Whoa. Hi. Hi. I forgot that you're bigger. It'll take me a while, but let's let yeah, let's go. What do we do now? The Order of Kirdira. They're sworn they're sworn They're sworn to an oath of protection. We can rely on them. Waltz glances down the hallway, his mouth drawn in a tight line. I see clear suspicion in his eyes. I look back at the king. The knights should have been here by now. Surely such a commotion should have brought them running. I'm editing. There we go. That was bugging me. Now I know why Waltz is staring down the hallway. He's searching for the knights that are meant to pass through here. There's no possible way they didn't hear the skirmish in my bedroom. Hmm. The three of us push onward. I stand between the king and Waltz, waiting. I'm not really sure what I'm waiting for, but I can feel the tension in the air. We only stop moving when a voice cuts through the silence. Your Majesty? Oh! Hi, Alcaster. Sir Alcaster steps before us with a group of knights. His face is impassive at best. Walt takes a step back as Sir Alcaster looks at the king. The king is quiet for a few moments, his eyebrows drawn together in a ter terse expression. He finally speaks. I'm about to declare a state of emergency. Where have you been? 
sees them. Nani? My eyes are still on, are on, still on the knights in front of us when they hear footsteps from behind us. I'm nonplussed when a dozen soldiers appear from the shadows and surround us. I look to Fritz in the clutch. I look for Fritz in the cluster of knights, but he's not there. The king stares around a baffled. What is the meaning of this? Could this be the reason why? What is happening? That voice. Well, I didn't know who it was, so. We all turn to watch the dining room doors open. Ophelia enters with Emily and Jinrod. Several knights trail behind and flank them on either side, giving them no room for escape. Rod knows it's me and stares in shock, but says nothing. Hi, bro. Gennaro! The minute she sees the king, she calls his name and attempts to run towards him. The knights only need to raise their sword and block her path to stop her. I think that takes care of all the intruders. Though I'm not happy that two managed to escape. Two? Jordan and Garland. If they manage to escape, they might be able to get reinforcements. The king will be judged and convicted. His crown will be given to one more worthy. I see. It was you who sent that letter, Alcaster. That's correct. Now, if you want to protect your family, you will hand over your crown. The king shakes with rage. Was this yours and Mithra's plan all along? To take down this kingdom at its heart? Sure, Alcaster snorts and crosses his arm. <laughs> Don't clump me together with that snake. Both of us have different goals. It just so happens that we both need to be rid of you. What? You're a weak king, Gennaro. The kingdom and jelly needs someone who will rule with an iron fist. You are too soft, and you're, so your subjects have become too dependent on the kingdom. And how do you propose I run my kingdom? By instilling fear. There's no place for fear in this kingdom. It's a ruler's obligation to ass assuage the fears of his people. I can't believe you would do this, Alcaster. I'm not going to say, sir. Alcaster looks at me with disinterest. Penelope, correct? I have no business with you. I suppose Mithros does. <laughs> Keep it back in the corner. What do we do? I feel for my pocket, my hand touching the smooth surface of a vial. I can still remember the potion that Parfait gave me before we left. I had forgotten I had this with me. Perfect told me to use the potion if we found ourselves in a difficult situation. She said it would give us time to escape. She didn't even tell me what it does. I glanced at Wallace, who's eyeing the knights quietly. It is also possible that Waltz would be able to do something about the situation with magic. I reach into my pocket and slip the vial out. I open my fingers just long enough for Waltz to see it. He gives me a solid nod before turning his attention to Sir Alcaster, who's still speaking with the king. I will make you regret your actions, Sir Alcaster. I throw the vial to the floor. The moment it shatters, a blinding white light envelops the room, forcing me to close, forcing my eyes to close. Walsh grabs my hand and pulls me away. Don't let them escape! I hear a few grunts from the knights as Waltz begins to barrel his way through them. Waltz leads me into the throne room. We have all somehow made it out. Rod stands between Ophelia and Emmeline. Rod must have pretty good eyes to be able to lead them both out of there in that, all that chaos. Good job back there to Penelope. 
I never realized you had a potion. Parfait gave it to me before she left on her urgent meeting. It's a good thing, then. You saved me by using it, you know? Using a more complicated spell would have drained my energy. Why is this happening? Shut up. Let me have a moment with the tall man. Emily and Jazai's eyes are filled with tears. Ophelia takes her into her arms and rubs her back in an effort to calm her. It's my fault. How could I have not foreseen this? Shireen was right about him. I should have listened to her. This is not your fault, Your Majesty. We don't have much time. We need to escape and tell Lady Parfait about this. Sounds like Jiren and Garland were able to escape. It's possible they will, they'll bring the reinforcements. Rod, you know these people? Rod is silent for a few moments before nodding at her. Yes, they're my friends. Friends? I wouldn't go that far. Rod just shrugs at me. Most like, more than likely, he just wants us to play along. Waltz paces the room, his arms crossed as he tries to think of something. Waltz? I haven't done this in a long time, but I can try to open a portal that leads back to the market. What just did do that? Only the most practiced witches. It only works if they have a clear image of where they want to go. So you can do it? I can. I was taught by your mother, after all. Ooh, his is purple. Nice. Walt starts waving his hand in front of him as he conjures a spell to open the portal. I don't know why I'm doing this. Maybe I'm trying to get back into the with him. With him? With him! But the portal disappears as soon as it appears and fades again. Damn it. They're coming, Waltz! I'm doing my best, princess. Nope. Waltz tries to cast a spell again. This time the opening appears and stays. I did it! But this won't be open for long. Your Majesty, you must go first. No, let Ophelia and the children go first. Waltz nods as he ushers Ophelia and Emily into the portal. Though Rod is reluctant to step inside, I force him into the portal before me. Just get moving. I can't keep the portal. I can't keep the portal much open much longer, Penelope. I can only manage one more person before I need to recast it. Your Majesty, you must go. Nope. What? I do not have any intentions of leaving. To leave this place is to abandon my kingdom. I will not flee like a coward. I will protect my throne until my last breath. But that would be suicide! He won't, will not kill me. He may have managed to sway the order, but I have the people on my side. The people can't fight against soldiers. I mean, they might, but... Killing me will cause an uprising that will let... And that, that is the last thing he will want. But if the king escaped, he would be able to fight from the outside. The castle and his crown are symbols. But he is in danger if he... I glance at Waltz and notes impaling. I can tell him... The magic is sapping him, his strength, making him weaker. I bow my hands into fist. I can't leave the king here by himself. He is the king, and I'm the crown princess. Waltz, you'll come back for me, right? What are you? Before he can react, I push, put my hands on his back and push with all the strength I can muster. Go! Bye-bye! Walt stares at me in horror as he falls into his portal. Bye! I'm sorry. Walt disappears and the portal collapses in on itself, leaving me with the king. 
Both my mind and heart are numb as the nights approach, ready to surround us. The king and I sit on the floor with our hands tied behind our back. There are two knights standing by the door to watch over us. I look at the king, who remains as quiet as solemn as before. He's been so calm. Does he have a plan? Why is it that you chose to stay with me? I'm kind of surprised when he finally breaks the silence. Because there are questions I need answers to. Besides, I can't just leave you here. I, I have many things I need to ask you. King Jernal falls silent as he stares at me. The coat of his eyes were clearly... <clears throat> the coat of his eyes clearly reflects my own. I had never realized how similar our eyes were. Is it true? Are you really my daughter? Yes. I was given the fairy tale curse and turned into a peasant. My title was stolen from me and from the mind from the minds of people. No one remembers who I am anymore. Cinderella? <laughs> How did you know? I noticed the glass slipper necklace on your neck. But the other slipper seems to be missing a piece. A uh, piece? I look down and stare at the second slipper. My eyes widen when I notice that the piece is bigger. <laughs> but when did this happen? I consider and I recall, recall the moment I broke Waltz's curse. Was it when I broke Waltz's curse? This means I only have one more good deed left to complete, but my birthday is tomorrow. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm just worried you've been th through much today try and get some rest you must reserve your energy I'm not sure what he means but either way there's no way I could possibly sleep now at least that's what I tell myself but as the minutes pass by I feel my eyes getting heavier Eventually, I drift into a dreamless sleep. Penelope, you must wake up. Uh, I blink a few times, and when I come to, I find that I'm leaning on the king's shoulder. Shit! I fell asleep. The king glances back to the door. His eyes narrow slightly as he takes a deep breath. It's time to go. What? I turn toward the front doors and realize that the knights guarding the room are missing. They'll be back soon. We must hurry. I'm surprised when the king pulls out of the ropes that were binding him. He has a small knife in his hand. Kings, always prepared. How long has he been out of his binding? When did you free yourself? I think I've been sorely underestimated. I've been trained just as well as the knights. It goes without saying that I can get myself out of bindings. I'm not so weak that I need to depend on others to protect me. Hmm. That sounds familiar. It sounds like something I would say. But where did you get the knife? They made sure to take anything we could have that could have been a weapon but it's suffice to say that I pulled it from a hidden spot not many people think to look in a pe person's boots the king leans down to cut my bindings and lower himself to the ground his fingers blush brush the floor what are you doing finding the keyhole ah here we are let's pulls a small key from his pocket and fits it into a crevice in the floor. The floor gives a gentle, audible rumble. 
The king pulls the tile from the floor, revealing a hidden staircase. Nah. There's a hidden stake staircase here in the floor. An escape route, if one were ever needed. Only I know of existence. Now we must go before they return. Yes, please. I'd like to go back to Waltz and get yelled at, please. Hang on, follow after him. The king sets the panel in place, and we descend down into darkness. The floor rumbles once more as the hidden path pathway closes behind us. Both of us walk in silence for some time. The, so the only sounds we hear are the echoes of our footsteps. And behind the king, Serena is back. Seems to have already recovered from his earlier injury. I think he's just be pretending that he's alright. How's your back? It doesn't hurt it as much now. Thank you for asking. Silence ensues once again. This is getting awkward. Maybe I should say something. Say something! I can't stand silence any longer. I speak up before I lose my nerve. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? Because I've done nothing to cause you, but cause you trouble. Rod told me that what Rod told me once that when they disappeared, he was the happiest he's ever been. Because I wasn't there. I'm sure if he had been given the chance to forget me or not, he would have chosen to forget me. Forget me. No. It feels like I have been the cause of your pain, not the other way around. I feel as if I should, I should be the one apologizing. I've been wondering for a while. If you are indeed my daughter, why do you address me by title? Do you not call me father? I stop in my tracks and turn away. It's been years since I called you that. You were never there for me, so I stopped considering you my father. A deafening silence falls upon us. I'm sorry. Can you tell me why you distance yourself from me? The king looks at me silently with something like regret in his eyes. I want to slap myself for my foolish question. My apologies. I forgot that you don't remember me. You know, I've learned many things since I've been cursed. But the things I have learned don't answer my questions. I had thought that by staying here I would finally chance upon some answers. Some truth. I always thought that only mother loved me because you were never there for me. I'm sorry I can't give you the answers you seek. Well, I can understand why you would hate me. You're a witch's daughter, after all. Hilder. Do you know what has transpired in the past? You mean with mother? Hilder threatened to kill people. I kill the people I love if I didn't marry her. She threatened to kill Ophelia. The king looks down, his face contorted with anger. Plus, he said that mother always already broke under broke the rules long ago before she took over the kingdom. Her hands were already stained with blood. I won't let any more of my loved ones die in her hands. I had no choice back then. I married her because I refused to let her hurt Ophelia. I hated that woman for ruling my life and my kingdom. I know. I recall when you thanked Waltz for saving the kingdom. Can you tell me who Waltz is? Waltz? He was Hilda's apprentice. He was powerful, considered the second strongest among the witches. Really? 
He was a child prodigy. That's why Hildur ordered his family killed when they refused to give him to her. Wallace didn't find out about that until much later. Mother killed Walt's family? I can't believe this. Just how many lives did she take? When he did find out, he betrayed Hilda. He divulged her plans to the fairies and helped them defeat her. I gave him a copy of the key to the secret tunnel so that he could deliver it to the Lucis Bearer. Huh. So that's how Parfait got the copy of the key. Then Hilda cursed him, betrayed her, cursed him for betraying her. I don't know how you two know each other, but it's fairly obvious to me that he's as loyal to you and cares about you. He was the type of person that expressed that loyalty plainly, so I can tell. I don't know why the king suddenly—I don't know why the king decided to comment on such a thing, but my cheeks are suddenly warm. You care for him. Do I? He is a good man. How did we even get to this conversation? The two of us are still walking when the king suddenly stops, and I nearly bump into him. Ah, uh, here we are. This should bring us into a passage that leads us into the garden. I follow the gates to a rusty door. He slowly approaches the door. Stay close to me. Aye, aye, sir. Turns it on and pulls open the door. <clears throat> Bats! The king and I can only gape at the sight in front of us. So the last thing we expect to see behind a door. Mother? Ooh. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm going to leave it here because it's getting strange. Remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, check the links below, and I will also link down to not only my Seduce Me walkthrough, my Seduce Me 2, the Seduce Me episodes, and the playlist to this, if I remember to. And I'll also link the description, link to this game, so you guys can enjoy it. It is free. It's really good. Worth it. <laughs> Worth the nothing you will have to pay. Um, subscribe if you want to see more, or if you just appreciate that I'm an idiot some days, or it will make me, my heart better even more. But anyway, I'm going to get out here, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!